step one as a whistleblower is actually coming to terms with what you saw or experienced. It seems like a really simple thing to do, but it took me, others I know, months to actually come to terms with, oh yeah, that was shitty. You know, that broke some rules, or most likely broke some rules. Looking back now, there was a lot of earlier signs. A lot of small things that just kept adding up. And I literally would have never put it down to that. Most of the times, it's not I saw some guy injecting testosterone. He has the picture and video of it. He has everything. It's not black and white like that. And I think acknowledging that is really important. Step one is coming to terms with the fact of what you saw was wrong. Then before you step forward, you essentially do this risk assessment scenario. I remember debating for months. Do I move on with my life? Sure, it really sucks, but if I don't say anything, no one will know. That's one option. I'd probably say it's the easier option to make. But on the other side, the part that eats away at you says, that's wrong. From the outside perspective, it's easier to say, it's wrong, go tell. But when you're stuck in it, with no resources to go to, is basically the internal battle where you debate these things because no one else understands it. So I guess before blowing the whistle, it's the internal struggle that goes on for a really, really long time. I think that was probably the most difficult part. So I try to move on with my life, you know, try to forget about it for a long time. Unfortunately, I couldn't. Staying quiet put me in a world where I was lying to everybody. And I started thinking, why? Why am I protecting those who do shady stuff and treated a bunch of people like sh It was kind of brewing. And then finally I had my tipping point and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do something with this. I'm going to tell somebody. If only it was that simple. Instead, whistleblowing's a process. The next question was, okay, who do I tell? I guess getting to that point of stepping forward, the threshold I crossed was, okay, I've, I've just got to get this off my chest. I'm going to send an anonymous tip to the NATO and then whatever, you know, someone knows something. So I send an email on their tip line without any name at all. Just send it on the ether and then waited a week or so and thought, this sucks. I, I don't know if anything's happened to it. So the next step was, okay, I'm going to send it and attach my email address to it. And then each step requires another internal turmoil to go through. So I sent that out there and then I got a reply saying, we'd love to talk to you. I was scared to go because I was afraid that somehow someone would find out that I went to the NATO. I was petrified of losing my contract. I was so paranoid that I didn't tell anyone. And I went to go see someone at the NATO. I was there probably four hours. I cried a lot. I, I felt so guilty. I felt like I was betraying those who I cared about. It's so f up. But even though I think they were cheating, I still care about them. I know them as people. It was so hard trying to describe that to the NATO because they were like, why are you crying? And I'm trying to explain because I feel like I'm betraying these people. They're my friends. They're my family. I've spent years with them and that sucks. Anyway, after I reported, I assumed the response would be, we're going to get to the bottom of this. I imagined I'd go in, tell them the people they needed to talk to, they talk to those people, and then they'd have everything they needed and it'd be done. Wrong. Instead, it's two months later and you've heard nothing but complete radio silence. 
in your head you're going crazy thinking, do they give a shit? Are they gonna do anything? Does any of this really matter? You kind of get this feeling that what you've done is a bit pointless. And then you're also thinking, for goodness sake, is it still corrupt? Eventually, I, I decided that if Nado wasn't gonna do anything, then, well, at least people needed to know, so, so I was just like, screw it. Let's just deal with it. Things really changed when I went public with it. There's no turning back. I don't even know how to describe it. Let's put it this way. I wouldn't even want people I don't like to go through some of the shit I went through. And it's changed everything about my life. I think the hardest part for me is going through all the comments and things on the media pages and seeing some of the stuff people say. And when I'm getting harassed on social media or whatever, it's just me. It's not me and five other people. It's just me. I just feel like I'm standing alone. Coming forward has changed how people perceive me and who wants to work with me. I think it was the fact that there was so much risk associated with me. No one wants drama, right? And unfortunately, I am labeled drama. It looks like I've been involved in some form of scandal. One thing no one ever really talks about is the fact as a whistleblower. It has an impact on other people too. Those associated with you have had more arguments about me stepping forward. Whether it's parents, brothers, sisters, partners, best friends. You have these blown up arguments over something because they're trying to look out for your best interest. I used to think when it's over, I'd be so happy. The truth is, I don't even want to see them get sanctioned. I just want them to not compete. It's so weird, I mean, I want justice, and I know that means that they have to get sanctioned, but human to human, I feel bad. It doesn't make me feel good. It's not like if they get sanction that I'm gonna be happy about it. It's going to sound crazy, but even after everything that's happened, I don't regret going public. I hate the way it's changed my life and all the negative things that it's changed. But I feel free. Before the report, I was drowning and hating the sport. After I spoke out though, things did kind of turn around. It was like this burden had been lifted from me personally. That alone has been worth it for me not having to carry around their secrets anymore. It would kill me. Carrying that around? I hated it. I hated always lying and putting it on me. I don't have to do that anymore. Mentally, it has freed me. I'd like to think that the whole thing tested me and I passed. A lot of people would question or fail that test. I was willing to throw my entire career away just to be the person that I wanted to be. How many people could say that? <laughs>